Hi, I'm Stuart, founder of G-Force Golf and inventor of the G-Force Swing Trainer. It comes in a 7 iron and a 54 degree wedge, standard weight club head, beautiful looking club head, mid-size grip. And the only difference being is the shaft is flexible. So it bends in all directions. There's also a little bit of torque in there as well, so it twists as well. But that's really going to help you out in smoothing out your transition. So it's great for tempo, great for rhythm, sequencing in your golf swing, and then improving that transition and any jerkiness in your golf swing. First thing we'll look at is, is the tempo and how this is going to help out. I mean, I'm a golf coach. I've been coaching 20 years now, and people struggle with uh, getting the tempo right, and that's, that's really the first thing you've got to get right in your golf swing. That's what you see all the top players doing. Now, because the shaft is really flexible, instinctively, you want to learn how to swing it without bending it too much. So if you've got a fast takeaway, you know, or you know, fast downswing, this thing's just going to bend out in front of you on the way down. So really what we're trying to do is allow your central nervous system to figure out how to swing this club, keeping that shaft rigid. Now you're not going to get it straight away. It could take you know, some of you might pick it up pretty quick, others it's going to take a lot longer, but really if you can stand there, learn how to swing smooth with this club, that's the first thing, because if you get your tempo, tempo gives you rhythm, which is all the moving parts in the golf swing working together. You know, that gives you the, the perfect sequencing in the swing, which is what's going to give you the effortless club head speed and good golf shots. So get your tempo, that's going to improve on your rhythm. A couple of things, before you start using it, you know, once you've got that nice rhythm, if you do find you're hitting the ball off to the right, the first thing you need to do is check your club face because a lot of you will have a very open club face at the top of the swing instead of square. So if you've got an open face, you're really going to struggle with this because as you come down, the face is going to twist open and then you're going to hit it a long way off to the right so I want to help you out with your swing initially to make sure that your club face is square so you can learn to use the swing trainer properly. First thing you need to look at to get the face square is your grip. Make sure your hands are not positioned too far around to the left side of the grip. So this is a weak grip which is going to get that face wide open at the top of the swing. The problem with that is if you've got a wide open face and a, an aggressive out to in swing and transition because of the torque in the shaft it's just going to open the face out even more so you're going to hit it off the toe and even if you do connect it's going to go a long way right so try and favor a grip that's a little bit more stronger where the v's on between the thumb and finger point a little bit more towards your right shoulder so that's going to help you get a little bit more of a square of face at the top check your takeaway as well what we don't want is you to be fanning that club face open so as you take the club away from the ball, imagine the club is an extension of your body and you're turning, keeping that club face square. That's how the face wants to look halfway back. And then at the top of your swing, you almost want to feel as though the face of the club is pointing a little bit more up towards the sky as opposed to out in front of your hair. So these are good checkpoints that you need to get right before using the trainer. Because the big issue with an open club face at the top of your swing it will cause you to compensate on your downswing to hit it straight and that compensation is an over the top movement which I see all open face golfers doing. All of the closed face golfers in that position when they come down I see the opposite, I see the golf club actually shadowing out more so if you're suffering with slicing over the top cutting across it really try and work and get in a square of face or if anything a little bit more closed at the top there. So that's the most important thing to start with. So now you've got a nice square club face or a little bit closed and with that as well, a nice smooth tempo. If you're still missing shots to the right with the swing trainer, it's going to be down to being too aggressive in the transition, either too aggressive with your body rotation, which is what I find with a lot of the single figures and professional players, or if you're a mid to high handicapper, you're too aggressive with your hands and arms in a downswing, you know, trying to get that club down as fast as you can, you know, trying to get the speed from your hands and arms as opposed to your lower body. So it's really going to help out with that. So that's what we're going to look at now. 
what will tend to happen if you get a bit aggressive from the top with your arms and, um, and body then it's going to put a bit too much load in the shaft there also it's going to cause the shaft to twist a little bit because of that bit of torque in there and it's going to open the face out so all of your shots will tend to go probably 30 40 yards off to the right but the important thing is that you're connecting with it you know Initially, when you struggle with your tempo, you won't be able to hit this thing at all. You know, you're never going to get that club onto the ball. Once you develop a, a better tempo, you'll then learn to strike the golf ball. So you'll be hitting more out the middle of the face, but still maybe going a little bit to the right because of this aggressive transition move. So that's what we need to look at now. If you take a look on my website, on my blog, uh, I've got a few in there and there's a few pictures of Danny Willett in transition with the, the G4 swing trying to wedge. And then what you actually see when he's in transition from the top of his swing coming down is it looks like a normal golf shaft. There's no bend in it. There's no twist on the face. It looks absolutely normal. Um, and also we've got Revolution Golf's Andrew Rice on there as well. Again, in transition, again, you're going to see the same, um, the same looking shaft on the downswing. As Danny Willett, you know, there's hardly any flex in it, club facing nice and square. There's also an amateur guy on there who would have a bit more of an aggressive downswing over the top move. You're going to see a lot more load on his shaft, you know, definitely a ball flight that goes to the right. So transition's really got to be smooth and it really it comes from the ground up. So when we get to the top of the swing, instead of trying to rush the club down with the arms and getting all of this bend and twist, we're sort of trying to work on starting with a lower body leaving the hands and arms alone, and then hitting through. You know, it's really important to make sure you're not aggressive in that move. A lot of the mid to high handicappers, you tend to try and swing your arms quicker than your body can rotate, and that causes a chicken wing, which is not good. And then the better players, you're always tending to focus on getting your body to rotate as fast as you can, but you know, you're leaving the hands and arms too far behind, getting trapped and, and ended up flipping on the way through. So a great drill to use to prevent you getting too aggressive with the, the arms and body is to set up left foot forward, right foot back. So, you know, this is quite exaggerated, but what it's basically going to do on my downswing is actually help my arms almost sort of slow down a little bit so then the club head can catch up and release, which is what you want. Okay, what we don't want is is this move where we're driving the hands forward and the shaft is staying loaded back and the face is wide open, you know. At some point where we need that shaft to kick forward and square the club face up. So by having this left foot forward here, it does really help the arm slow down and then the club head speed up on the way through. Definitely recommend trying this one, especially if you're hit, hitting it a long way to the right. Just get that stance, club face aiming at the target. And then from there, just swing through. Now I can really feel the hands and arms releasing the club head there as it goes through the ball. Now, if anything, that's gone a little bit left, which is pretty unusual when you use this club. So that's a great sign. So that's the great drill. Get that stance exaggerated. Just going to stop you getting aggressive with the body and the arms. Let the club release. That was a better one. Nice and straight on that one. So that's a perfect drill, try that one. I'm gonna show you another one as well, which I've, I've always used over the years with my students. You know, a lot of you tend to chicken wing, which is really down to your arms, moving quicker than your body can rotate. So let's take a look at that one for you now. Okay, here's the next best drill. What I want you to do is imagine a piece of rope here. So all we're trying to do as it comes through is make a swing and then stop the arms and club just before it hits that imaginary rope. What that's doing, it's forcing the arms to slow down and then the club head to speed up, which is what we want. Just to give you an example, if a tall player is swinging the club head at 90 mile an hour, the hands and arms are only going about 15 mile an hour. So that gives you an idea. We've got to transfer that energy from, from the arms and get it down into the club head. A lot of you are swinging your arms 90 mile an hour and you club it at 15. And if you do that with this, this club here, get the arms traveling 
too fast, you're going to create too much back load in the shaft, too much twist on the face, and it's going to stay open, go to the right. So the stopping the arms drill really gets the, the energy from, from the body and the arms down into the club head so the shaft can kick forward and square up. Because if, when the shaft loads on the backswing, if you accelerate the grip too much, it's going to stay open, so you're going to hit to the right. Whereas if you can actually you know, almost slow the arms down, let the shaft kick forward, as it kicks forward, the face squares up. If it doesn't kick forward, it's going to stay wide open. So imagine that bit of rope here, just trying to stop, stop my arms. I don't want to be stopping back here. This is not good. I don't want to be stopping in the middle of my body. I'm almost trying to feel like I'm stopping just after I hit it where my hands are just past my left, left leg there. I really feel that shaft kicking forwards on the way through. So let's give it a go. So that one's nice and straight. You can feel the shaft kicking forward. And into a good position. So my body was rotating and then the arms coming through. A lot of you get really quick with the arms and your arms tend to outrace your body, which is no good. That's what causes the chicken wing. Because if your arms are moving quicker than your body can rotate, you're going to get in that position. You want your body clear and then release on the way through. A couple of swings, early arms stopping. Solid. Let's just show you from a different angle. Okay, let's, let's check it out from this angle so you can see. Again, just trying to imagine stopping here. Feel that shaft kick. There we go, good solid shot. You know, I certainly don't hear them like that all the time, but the great thing about this is it will tell you when you're not doing it right because you'll feel it in the shaft. This gives you instant feedback. So it really fine tunes your golf swing. You know, it cuts out all the thinking and then just gets you feeling. Oh, that one there, a little bit thin. But you can see how the stopping or slowing down of the arms allows the shaft to kick forward and squares the face. You know, you can't see me hitting the ball 40 yards out to the right there. So certainly one of the drills you want to work on if you're hitting the ball to the right. Thanks for watching.